Hi everyone, and welcome to another video of the SAFI webinar series. In this video, we are going to have an overview of the main toolbar. On the main toolbar, we find a group of buttons that allow the user to do many operations, change the settings of the application, and also hide or view other toolbars. Now on the left-hand side, we find the buttons that allow you to create a new file, opening an existing file, save the current file, print any graphics, and also we find the undo and redo buttons. Next to it, we find the verify input data button, general options, project setting, unit of measure, and the display option command. Next to this group of options, we find a series of buttons that allow the users to hide or view the toolbars, including the camera toolbar, the addition toolbar, the selection toolbar, the general input toolbar, the sections toolbar, the static loads toolbar, and the seismic and dynamic toolbar. On the right hand side of the main toolbar, we find a series of comments that help the user specify the design code parameters around the analysis and also generates or opens a report. Without further ado, let's start the live demo. For this live demo, we are using the GSE application. The main toolbar is located on the top. I'm going to move it to the center and we can take the time to visit all the commands on the toolbar. To create a new file, we use the new button. So we simply click on the new button and we create a new file. To open an existing file, we click on the open button and we select the file that you want to open and we click open. Then we simply open that model. To save the current file, we have a save button. Next to it, we find the print button, which allows the user to print any graphic from the application or any dialog box in the application itself. So we select the printer and we click on OK to print it. We find the undo and redo buttons on the main toolbar as well. And next to them, we'll find the verify input data. The verify input data command allows the user to check if there are any mistakes in the model. This could include mistakes like you forgot to assign supports or assign sections to members or that there are joints that are not attached. This command will detect this type of mistake and it will display the diagnostic report for that. The general options allows the user to switch the languages so the applications are available in either French or in English. And at any time, you can switch between these two languages. Also, you can change the default and save at any time. So, by default, the save time is 10 minutes, but you can change it, for example, to 2 minutes if you want the software to save your model every 2 minutes. Here we find these two buttons. For the analysis mode, we have a 2D analysis mode and a 3D analysis mode. By default, we use the 3D analysis mode, which means for each joint, we have six degrees of freedom and we have three translations and three rotation. If we are using the 2D analysis mode, we have three degrees of freedom per joint two translations, and one rotation. So, after that, we find the project setting. In this dialog box, we will specify the project information, including the project ID, the project name, the location, the company name, the engineer's name, and the project description. When we generate the report, we will have the option to include this information in the report. Next to it, we find the unit of measure button. This command allows the user to specify the unit system in the current model. By default, we have the metric unit system and the imperial unit system, and you can simply activate one of them by clicking on this button. For each unit system, the user has the possibility to change the units. For example, for length, 
If you want to use meters instead of millimeters, you can do that. For each unit, the user can customize the unit that is being used. After that, we find the display options. The display option command allows the user to specify all the different options related to the display and the elements of the model. You can control the visibility of the elements, the colors, the sizes, the text, and the scale. For example, if we want to change the way how the members are displayed, we have this parameter, the section's shape. So, right now we see the section's shape displayed as solid. If we want to display it as a wireframe, we can select this option. And, if we want to display it as simply the cross section, we can specify this option. For each of the type of elements, you will have many parameters that the user can specify. After that, we will find a series of buttons. This series of buttons allow the user to display or hide other toolbars, including the camera toolbar that we have here on the left, the addition toolbar, and we also have the selection toolbar. Here we have the general input toolbar, the section toolbar, the static load toolbar, and the climatic toolbar. Finally, we have the seismic and dynamic toolbar. The last series of buttons, we find the general codes and standards parameter button. This command allows the user to specify different parameters with respect to the code that is selected. To run an analysis, we simply click on this button to run the analysis. And we click on this, and then the analysis will run like that. Once the analysis is completed successfully, we will close this. Then, next to it, we find this button here, View and Hide the Results Toolbar. The Result Toolbar is the toolbar that we see on the right by default. To hide or unhide it, we can simply click on this button. To generate a report, we use this button to generate the report. And from this menu, the user can check or uncheck any input table or result table to be included or excluded in the report. By simply checking this box, we will exclude this table from the reports and then to generate a report, we simply click on Generate. To open an existing report, we click on this button next to it and we can select the report to open. The last button on the main toolbar is the Context Sensitive Help button. We can click on any of the buttons to get help or more information regarding this button. If I click on this button, I will have the corresponding information about that command. So, that's it for the main toolbar. Thank you for watching this video and catch you in another one of our webinar series videos.